It started with a crowdfunding campaign and now is a success story to inspire those with startups. Hello and thanks for joining us. I'm Laurel Hassan. This is Comcast Newsmakers Extended. Joining me now is the co-founder of Ash and Anvil, Stephen Mazur. Thank you so much for joining us today. Pleasure to be here. So what exactly is Ash and Anvil and, and sort of uh, it's a very new company. Tell me a little bit about uh, how you really created an amazing company out of no dollars in the city of Detroit. Yeah, so we'll try to keep it short and sweet. Um, we make everyday clothes for shorter guys. At the end of the day, as you can see, I'm pretty short. If I stand up, I'm only 5'6", in that smaller range. And it's really tough to find clothes that fit well. There are major retailers catering to big and tall men, to plus size women, to petite women, but there's nothing for shorter guys, even though one third of the American population is men that are 5'8 and below. So there's a ton of shorter guys, no companies making clothes for us, and most short guys, like myself, have to tailor every piece of clothing they buy, go shop in the kids section or get lucky with whatever they can find. And that's a terrible experience. So we said, look, we want to make the first major brand for shorter guys and design a whole wardrobe of clothes specifically for that build. Started with shirts. This is one of ours. Casual button downs are meant to be worn untucked and look good. But again, eventually want to have that first major brand for shorter guys. It's, it's sort of an, a bizarre adventure how you got to where you are. Your background is not in clothing design. Your business partner's background is not in clothing <laughs> design. You guys aren't even from the same states. How did you end up with uh, two guys from two different areas in the city of Detroit designing clothing? Yep, you don't think of Detroit very much when you think of clothing companies. Uh, we actually met through a program called Venture for America. So I'm from the Detroit area, went to college down in North Carolina. My business partner, Eric, is from D.C. area, went to college at Notre Dame. But we met through Venture for America. It's a nonprofit whose mission is to help revitalize the country through entrepreneurship, and they match recent grads with startups in America's emerging and struggling cities. So startups get great talent at a really low cost, and for young people, they get a wonderful experience learning how to build companies firsthand. So we worked at a company called Social Proof, based in downtown Detroit. They were invested by Dan Gilbert and Detroit Venture Partners. I was on the business side, Eric on the technical side. And after two years working together there, we got to know each other. We understood our strengths and weaknesses. And after that fellowship program, after two years, we said, why don't we go and try and do our own thing? Thought about problems in our own life, and finding clothes that fit well was the biggest one. We don't have apparel backgrounds. We'll be the first to admit that. But we do understand e-commerce and online growth and that type of thing. And we found some amazing mentors and supporters in New York that have fashion experience to help complement our lack of skills there. And the clothes are great. So speaking of e-commerce, uh, you launched your store not that long ago, back in November. Yep. Um, so there's no brick and mortar building in the city of Detroit, yet uh, you are providing jobs and, and dollars, hopefully, at, le at least for now, uh, for, for the two guys who founded the company. Uh, <laughs> it's a good thing for Detroit, uh, but all your business is, uh, is, is e-commerce. It is, yeah. So we've tried to stay local as much as possible. We use a fulfillment center and a warehouse that's based in Warren. We make our custom boxes out in Plymouth. And we really try to stay as much as we can in Detroit, in the metro Detroit area. And we want to build our company here. We're committed to the city. But we do sell online. And the majority of our customers are elsewhere. And I think the, the benefits of being online is that you have lower overhead. You can get started easily. We didn't have too much money to put into the business when we got started. But we could take those pre-orders and get off the ground fairly easily and fairly quickly versus a brick and mortar. One day, we'd love to have a store in Detroit and across the entire country, have Ash and Anvil stores where guys can touch and feel clothes. But for now, we try to make the experience of shopping online as easy as possible, even though we know it is hard to do so since you can't feel the clothes. Um, but it's, a, it's an optimized process. We're always going to work on that. And eventually, one day, we'll either be in wholesale or have our own retail stores as well. So launching that store, obviously, a huge step. So uh, what's next? Where do you see yourself uh, maybe a year, five years from now? Yeah, so right now it's just shirts. We get emails every day saying, when are you going to have pants, pajamas, jeans, chinos, athletic apparel, everything where height's a factor. I know for me, every pair of pants I buy, I have to chop off three inches on the bottom and get it tapered. And even for jeans, it doesn't look good. It looks like the wash and the knees on the shin. And it's not just me. It's a lot of shorter guys. Even things like basketball shorts, things that you don't think of as much, it's really tough to find ones that fit well. So we want to design a whole wardrobe. Next up is definitely going to be jeans, chinos, and dress shirts, some of the items that customers have asked for the most. But, uh, and that'll be next year. This year's just focus on shirts. Um, but eventually, really have, you walk into a J. Crew Banana Republic, make sure we have that same diversity that they do, even if we're online. All right, awesome. An awesome success story. We'll talk a little bit more uh, in just a couple of minutes about uh, the details of the clothing, what makes you guys different, that kind of thing. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. And thank you, but don't go away. We're going to be right back with the other co-founder of Ash and Anvil, Eric Wong.
Great shops, great eats, and great places. It's my destinations only on Xfinity On Demand. From Detroit to Grand Rapids, now you can check out some of Michigan's greatest destinations. Delicious pizza, Michigan craft beer, great family museums, and so much more. It's easy. Push the On Demand button on your remote, navigate to Get Local, and select My Destinations. It's My Destinations only on Xfinity On Demand. Another way Comcast stays focused on the community. Welcome back. Joining me now is the other co-founder of Ash and Anvil, Eric Wong. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. So the thing that has intrigued me the most about your, your story is that here are a couple of guys, college educated, entrepreneurs, <laughs> right. energetic, with no money and no knowledge of the apparel business. Right. And now you have started uh, what is appearing to be a successful apparel store. How, right. does, how does one do that? How do you, I mean, obviously somebody else is designing your clothing for you. So actually, no, we actually design our clothes ourselves. Oh. Yeah, so we actually, we actually uh, design, source, manufacture, and sell our own clothing. So we have, literally have our own unique specifications and actual designs we develop ourselves for our actual clothing fit. Um, so you're right, we don't have a lot of you know, background in this space, right? But being an e-commerce business and being young guys, right, we can learn. We've learned a lot, actually, the past uh, year and a half now. And so we spent a lot of time right in Philadelphia and New York and making those connections when we first started to understand, like, how do you make clothes? Right? We, had, we had no idea. <laughs> Which is very honest. So you went right. to college for four years, but then you went to this program yes. to learn everything you need to know. <laughs> well, so so uh, not really program. So right. we um, we had help. You know, we had so so Stephen mentioned Venture for America, right? We had resources through that program to help us be, you know, basically have time, right, to find the people we need to talk to in New York, in the fashion space, who can give us advice as to who to talk to, how to source clothes, how to make clothes, how to design clothes, all those things. And your clothing is unique, so yes. do you use a unique process? Uh, I mean, mm -hmm. other than appealing to, to shorter men, w right. why is it different? Yeah, yeah. so, our, our, shir so our, our shirts are shirts, the men's shirts, right? But they're designed to fit a shorter man better than anything else off the rack. And so we spent a lot of time, in fact, eight months, developing our unique spec. And we were in Philadelphia actually this time, right? And we would go to start events, right, and find shorter men like us. Be like, hey, you know, we're shorter men. We're building this company, trying to make clothes for shorter men. Would you want to come and hang out in our apartment, right? Have some beer and try and clothes, right? And take pictures and help us develop this unique spec, right? It's pretty weird. Uh, it worked though. We we we, we literally had, we, we spent eight months and and had hundreds of guys come to our apartment, just, right, and try and clothes. Took a lot of photos, and we 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 figured out what works and what doesn't work based on what you know our competitors' clothing, right? And based on that, we also developed our unique fit for shorter men. So obviously, you know, shorter body lengths, shorter sleeve lengths, but also like sh smaller collars and small tweaks like that. So now I just mm -hmm. have to wonder, uh, why aren't the main major clothing manufacturers, <laughs> sure. why haven't they, why aren't they doing this? Is it, is it, is it too small of a demographic sure, to bother sure. with? It's a great question. Uh, it, it is a niche, yes, but it's still, you know, one in three men, adult men in this country are five and under. That's 40 million guys. It's mm -hmm. a big niche. You know, uh, I, big and tall, right, is a five billion dollar industry. I think this short section, or you want to call it, right, will be a billion dollar industry eventually some, soon. And hopefully we can be the defining company in this category. So I think, you know, it's a matter of that they just don't care right now, right? They're, they're, they're focused on the, the average guy, the guy who's 5'10", 6'2", right, you know? And, and I think guys who are 5'8 and below or something sort of been historically ignored for now. Well, uh, you saw a problem, and uh, <laughs> yes. you are trying to solve it. Yep. Uh, what was it like for you coming from 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 DC? Sure. You're, you're not a Detroit native. Yes. Uh, you know, it takes a lot of guts to move to a new city you've never <laughs> been to before, uh, and yeah. start and live here and yeah. and start yeah. a business. And you didn't do it two months ago when the no. city was already on its comeback. You did yeah. this two and a half years ago. Um, you know, how has Detroit been for you? And, yeah. and and is it a good place to ha to run a business? Yeah, it's a great question. I so I had never been to Detroit before two and a half years ago when I first moved here. Um, and so I came, so the first thing first is I actually, I mean, I didn't come blind, I mean, sort of blind, um, but I had help in terms of, you know, the VFA network, right, was pretty helpful to us. I had a job here, right? I wasn't coming unprepared, sort of, um, but, you know, so it helped. My parents still think it's nuts, <laughs> and they still want me to go back home to D.C. still, but uh, I think, you know, me being here, living downtown last two and a half years, right, things have changed a lot, you know, and for the better, I think, you know, there's tons of construction downtown, you know, uh, the building new stadium in Midtown, right? These things were literally started less than a year ago, mm -hmm. right? And all these things are, are increasingly better and better, right? Where, you know, it's exciting, right? Things are happening. And I think that we're hopeful we can be part of that trend here and sort of help create jobs and help be part of this economic impact and, you know, help Detroit sort of come back. Your business partner sure. uh, mentioned that hopefully someday you'll have a, a brick and mortar yes. building somewhere <laughs> in Detroit. Does Detroit have a fashion industry? No. <laughs> so, so not right now. I, I think, you know, there, there is a growing trend of consumer products in Detroit. Uh, we're one of them, I hope, you know, and hope we hope to be sort of part of this specific trend for, for apparel. 
Um, there is actually some movement in trying to build a garment district, as they call it, right, in Detroit as well, which is exciting. Um, so hopefully we'll be part of that essentially. Okay, that would be amazing. Well, yeah, good luck. Uh, hopefully the next uh, five years will treat you as well as the last five have. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you as well for watching this extended version of Comcast Newsmakers. Thanks again.